Can I shoot another one? Yes, carry on, please. Have you not shot yet? No. Oh, sorry. What, what are you wanting him to do? Yeah. Uh, your bolt wasn't closed. Oh, that's why. It has to go forward and then the handle has to go forward. Just like this. Slam it shut. Oh, oh the mouse gun. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Two taxi, good. Yeah, I've still got some left. Um, I like them. I really like them. The white one likes them as well. You shot? Yes. Ah! You me? Straight away in the center. Okay. Right, my turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Right, stop while you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to go, Mike. The average size of the group on North Five, on lane 15, four, uh, four sorry, four shots. You know, if you talk about the breathing as well, you know? So you know it is when you take your shot at the... When I go to Hungary... Oh, yeah, I've got a couple of things in the Yeah. But, uh, this time... This time, this time, this time. Okay. So there's a record of me taking it and going to the moment. Right, I'm making this video for the second time because the first time around I had no sound so I've opened up uh, what I wanted to show you but I'll start again and we'll go through it from the beginning so when I was in the services the field dressing well, came packaged like this I'm not going to open these ones and inside you got an absorbent pad on a, band, on a bandage and, and that was it but since then we've moved on a bit and we've got a thing called the emergency bandage or Israeli bandage and they come in various sizes 4 inch, 6 inch and 8 inch versions and they are a significant improvement on the old field dressing and the reason for that is I'll show you so let's take the four inch bandage so <clears throat> it comes in packaging and it can be different colours because there's military versions which can be grey or green and civilian versions which come in white packaging and the civilian versions the bandage itself will just be white so you rip the top corner and you pull out the bandage but the bandage is still wrapped it's in another wrapper another sterile wrapper inside so it's double wrapped so when I'm chainsawing I've got a six inch bandage which I've taken out of the outer wrapper and just left it in the inner wrapper because that's one less wrapper I have to open if I need it and if I need it 
with the chainsaw I need it probably right now so you open it and you get the bandage out and the first thing you might notice is there's a big plastic bit on it which is why it's important to be familiar with your equipment so if after this video you are thinking of purchasing one of these bandages off eBay or Amazon or wherever then don't get one or two get two or three at least one to play with so you know how to use it because when it's dark when your fingers are cold that's not the time to be learning in an emergency so <clears throat> let's just see what we've got then we've got this bandage out and what you want to be careful of is it's got a non-absorbent dressing in there and you, you want to try not to uh, handle that or let any dirt get on it so you open it up carefully and you find there are two ends one short end and one rolled up end and there you've got the dressing so I'll go, just go through putting the dressing on. Jess? Jess? Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Right. <clears throat> so, let's say I have a wound on my shin. We'll zoom in a little bit. So there we go, I'm not going to strip off because it's freezing cold, uh, let's just say the wound's here somewhere. So I can take the bandage and I can apply the non-adhesive gauze dressing onto the wound, I can make it fairly tight and I can start bringing this lead around. I've positioned it so the wound is below this mark if you like and this cleat or pressure bar is off to one side. Now what a lot of instructions will tell you to do is to take this leader, this bandage, put it through the pressure bar like that and then start wrapping in the opposite direction. Okay but that's not how I like to do it. I like to take it at least once more round then bring it back central then put it through the pressure bar and then start wrapping it in the opposite direction again what this pressure bar does is it comes down on the wound and it puts quite a bit of pressure on the wound because generally you're trying to do two things, you're trying to keep the wound clean and stop it from bleeding and that pressure will help stop it from bleeding. And then just take the lead around the bandage, cover both sides of the wounded area so you can't get debris in. Now when I first took this out of the packing, if I dropped it, it wouldn't just unroll because it's got little stitches in it that keep it rolled up until you put a little bit of pressure on it and that stitching breaks. So that's another feature it's got as well. So I carry on <clears throat> using all the bandage and when I come to the end of the bandage there's another bit of plastic and that bit of plastic is called the closure bar so to finish off the, the bandage, all you do is put the closure bar through a couple of parts of the bandage. You, you can do it on both sides, but you only really need to do it on one side. It's better doing it on both, but you only really need to do it on one side. And that will hold the bandage there. And now I've got quite a, quite a bit of force on that wound site, closing it up, keeping it compressed. 
and stopping it from bleeding. And it, you, you can apply up to about 30 pounds of pressure. Uh, there's not 30 pounds of pressure on there, but there are ways of increasing that pressure. So if I just take the bandage off again a little bit, I'll just wind it up a little bit more. This is an elasticated bandage, so <clears throat> it'll keep that pressure on. Now, <clears throat> if it's bleeding profu profusely and I want to put a, even more pressure on, the f what I can do is I can twist the bandage to make a very narrow point over the closure bar and bring it down and that puts more pressure on that area. And again, twist and roll. There's a few people kicking about so the dog is <clears throat> a bit inquisitive. Anyway, then we carry on and again we just close it. If you've got <clears throat> severe bleeding, you can do something else. You can wrap it round as normal but instead of closing it off find about two wraps and push the closure bar through say two wraps and then start twisting like a tourniquet and that'll put I, I'm starting not to be able to bear the pressure on there now uh, and then just hook it in so, Jess, Jess, come here. Oi. Come on. Good dog. And that acts somewhat like a tourniquet. You're never going to get full tourniquet pressure on it. I reckon you'd snap this bar before you got full tourniquet pressure. Uh, but it will go somewhere to, to giving you a tourniquet pressure. Uh, <clears throat> so, if it was very very profuse bleeding you might have to put a, a, a regular tourniquet on higher up but be aware tourniquets are very dangerous things you put a tourniquet on somebody and you've vastly vastly increased the chances of them losing that limb and you could in fact kill them if that tourniquet has been on for a length of time and then you release it suddenly without proper medical assistance uh, the shock can kill them. Uh, but I just wanted to bring your attention to this bandage if you've not used it before. There are quite a few um, videos on its use and it can be used in awkward areas like on the head or round the neck or whatever. Obviously you're not going to apply great deals of pressure if it's on um, delicate places like the abdomen for example. Uh, and there are a couple of specialist versions of these bandages available for uh, <coughs> traumas where you're losing your abdominal contents and stuff like that uh, and there are versions with two pads on for an entry and an exit wound uh, so but it's worth having a six inch one of these in your first aid kit uh, but it's obviously worth having used one as well so you, you, you're familiar with it if you have to use it in anger. So, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And hopefully we'll get back to the colloidal silver in due course. I'm just making a fresh, um, a new condenser for that because it's just distilled water that, that's holding me up. <clears throat> of course everything I've done with this bandage I could more or less do with a shimog apart from the fact that this is absorbent and you're going to get problems taking it off the wound afterwards but uh, <clears throat> Just because you haven't got the right gear with you doesn't mean you can't do something. Which is why I always carry a small first aid kit with me in, just in my pocket.
just when I'm out with the dog and it's mainly because of the dog because if you've had dogs over any length of time you know they're going to get cut feet but uh, certainly for the range or when I'm at work when I'm at the range I carry a big first aid kit, when I'm just at work I'll carry a smaller one, not this one, but uh, one that's this size. And it has uh, emergency or Israeli bandage in it. So if you're in the outdoors, uh, certainly you need to think about first aid. And certainly the first thing to think about in first aid is having a first aid kit, a reasonable one. And the second thing to think about is getting some professional training because you cannot beat professional training. Right, so that is the emergency bandage then. Well worth, well worth the money. They've got a very long shelf life. Uh, <clears throat> I don't worry too much about shelf lives, but uh, one reason that they need a shelf life really, I mean you, you could tell if the vacuum went because they'd expand quite a bit uh, if you lost the vacuum in them uh, but some of them have chemicals on the um, on the pads I don't think they have anything like cellox or clotting agent on there but uh, they certainly have some sterilizing agents on there so that's that then uh, I'll uh, tell you as well I'm not a professional medical person I'm just a first aider um, with a bit of experience and with an obvious interest because I spend a lot of time outdoors in potentially dangerous situations so we'll leave it there then, and uh, I've waffled on enough, I'll catch you in a week or so. I, I'd just like to say as well, uh, I'm very very pleased for Mad Dog survival, he's got himself a bit of land, uh, I've got my use of this land until the build on it. Um, it's not my land, it's open to any public, uh, which is why I've got to be a little bit careful, but we're going to lose it soon, so <coughs> use it before I lose it. It's not a big wood, but uh, it's a few acres. Right next to a busy road, but that's why I've got the uh, microphone on, uh, and that's why I had to do this video again because uh, the transmitter wasn't talking to the receiver for some reason. Right, we've got visitors now, so that's it.